Okay, so we're going to play Raphael, Omnipotent Perception. And it says, if you meet a Lemurian on a stormy night, dot, dot, dot. <laughs> oh God. Okay, let's begin. Oh dear me. Totally innocent. Just saying. <laughs> A summer heat wave surges into the depths of the shade provided by green trees. It's not even noon and the street cafes are packed with tourists. Afternoon sunlight pours in through the cool glass windows, casting specks of light on the smiles of two ceramic angels. I have everything you can think of. Dinnerware made centuries ago. Glass ornaments, even manuscripts from well-known artists. Or maybe you want to see something else, miss? Don't mind me, I was just passing by and thought I'd look around. Amongst the rows of cabinets and display cases, there's no one else in this small quaint antique shop. Then do you just want that book in your hand? Yes, I do want to buy it. I nod absentmindedly and glance at the book I have grabbed to cover my face. One Lemurian on a stormy night? It's a rare book. In all my years, I've only ever seen the copy in your hand. Ooh, I do like a good book. Um, Canty's not here today because she's on a date. Look at her touching grass. Oh my gosh. I sound she's on a date quite a lot recently, isn't she? Like, but cool. I hope she has fun. Mister, did you happen to see a young person around my age stop by the store? A young person? You're the only customer I've had since I opened the shop this morning. I see. Thank you so much. And could you please wrap this book for me? No problem. Though, have you paid attention to the weather? It might rain today. Don't stay outside for too long. I like a good rainy day. After saying goodbye to the owner of the antique shop, I push open the door and look up at the clear blue sky. I'm somewhat confused. Rain? The weather forecast said it was going to be sunny all day today. Maybe it's because she's holding the magical book. I don't know. That's the life. Cadmus. <laughs> The hall bell tolls in the distance for the first time in the afternoon resounding through the air. Raphael stands at the corner of a spiral staircase watching as the girl disappears under the blazing summer sun behind the glass door. She seems like a good kid. Yeah. And she's the kind of good kid you like too. I already checked the luggage upstairs for you. Everything should be good to go. So Raphael was here but he didn't say hi to us. I see you're trying to change the subject. She doesn't understand me. She thinks she does, but... Ooh. As the cicada's frenzied chirps reach a crescendo in the afternoon, his voice fades. I told you before that you didn't need to see me. Everything's almost packed up. I can move out tonight. But I didn't sell the house you lived in back then. I'm keeping it for you. Rest assured. You don't have to worry about anything here. I just stopped by to see you. Don't get ahead of yourself. I'll be more careful about not revealing my whereabouts. Maybe there will be a day when I move into your neighborhood. You can do that right now. Talia and I will take care of you. Haven't we spent enough time together? I'd rather enjoy some time alone. Who is this antique shop owner anyway? Never seen him appear in any anywhere else. See someone special. Raphael's dad. I'm joking, obviously. Knowing what he means, Raphael purses his lips and doesn't say anything. Never mind. Is there anything else that needs to be packed? Is it raining yet? This summer, Raphael and I went to a country located on a peninsula, which is renowned for its literature and art. 
After he completed his work for an art exhibition in its capital city, we travelled south along the border for sightseeing. The final stop of our trip is a small city that encompasses the essence of the arts and literatures, but We agreed to just get ice cream. What's taking him so long? He's not even responding to my texts. Oh, okay, so they're here together and then Raphael seems to have like snuck away. And I saw Raphael walk into the antique shop. How did he vanish in the blink of an eye? Raphael has yet to respond, so I decide to sit down on a bench and flip through the book I bought on a whim. As soon as I open it, a dusty scent hits me. Each line exudes the fragrance of ancient ink. Lemuria is the birthplace of a uh, birthplace, <laughs> birthplace of human civilization, and it's often referred to as. M it is said that in thousands of years before Lemurians vanished, they faced not one but a series of disasters. Mo in Lemurian means motherland. Oh, okay. So I, th I was wondering if that was. Suddenly, a hand holding an ice cream cone appears from behind me. The index finger traces the words I just read. Is this why you named your art studio Mo Art Studio? Bingo. Raphael walks to the front of the bench, sits down next to me, and hands me another ice cream cone. Sorry for the wait. This dessert place had a lot, and I mean a lot, of ice cream flavors. I just chose my favorite for you. Try it. Ooh, ice cream. He makes it seem so natural that all my doubts disappear. I don't know, I, I always wonder what my favorite flavor is and all the flavors of ice cream I like are like different because I like matcha ice cream, which is like on the bitter side, but I also really like bubble gum, particularly the rainbow woo one. <laughs> I don't know if I'm making sense, but that's like super sweet. If you don't say mint ice cream, I haven't had mint ice cream in ages, but it used to be my favorite fancy. <laughs> What's your favorite anyway? Apparently your have favorite you ice our next cream. Destination? Apparently your favorite uh, ice cream says a lot about you. <laughs> I don't know how true that is. It's probably like some silly pop psychology, but <laughs> the thought is funny. I'm basic, I like vanilla. I kind of get that though, like, also different vanillas taste different. Like, some stores have better vanilla than others. Saying that, I think I actually prefer milk or um, cream flavour more than vanilla maybe? I don't know. I do like vanilla though, especially when they've actually got the vanilla pods in them. The guide said there are many must-visit places, yet we're only staying here for one more day. Raphael glanced at the travel guide I have on my phone. The art museum closest to us right now has the world's famous Birth in the Oceans. Let's go there first. Birth in the Oceans, is After that- After the museum tour, we can head straight to the famous square by walking down this path for a bit. Birth in the- is that like the, 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 the picture of Venus? Like in a shell? <laughs> I only discovered recently that, like of how- Aphrodite was born and I'm like what <laughs> I love it if you get tired of walking we can visit a nearby bike rental to get a tandem bicycle hmm the theater is definitely worth visiting but we didn't make a reservation in advance we'll have to try our luck why are you looking at me like that Okay, so how, how it happened was, right, and this isn't for the faintest of ears, but I think it was Kronos cut off the private area of one of the other gods and it went flying and then in the sea and then it bubbled and then there came Aphrodite. <laughs> I'm childish, I can't help but laugh at that. I'm just imagining it like flopping away into the sea. <laughs> oh my god. Cookie dough and brownie ice cream is where it's at. Oh, I do like cookie dough. Cookie dough ice cream is delicious. Waffles, vanilla ice cream, maple. Oh, Kathleen, of course you've got like a whole... 
sort of assortment and then being put together as opposed to just the simple flavor <laughs> but yes yeah, so that is how aphrodite slash venus was born <laughs> I know you did your research ahead of time, but doesn't it seem like you're too familiar with this place? I have no idea what you're talking about. I just happened to live here before. Huh? As he speaks, he bites into his melting ice cream cone, his nonchalant tone treating this as a trivial matter. Since it's the last day of our trip, you should let me do the planning, you know? To be honest, vanilla ice cream, maple syrup and waffles sounds delicious. Ugh. Yum. Although, replace the waffles with brownie, maybe. I do like brownies with the ice cream. In this small city where tourist attractions are scattered like stars in the sky and roads, roads wind, wind like a maze, cycling, cycling could be the most convenient way of getting around. Inside the bike rental, Raphael fusses over the selection of bikes for a while before pushing forward a tandem bicycle. I figured us riding together on the streets would undoubtedly put the spotlight on us. Gotta add the rainbow sprinkles. Fancy. Gotta add the rainbow sprinkles. Let's not. We each get our own ride. It's been a while since I rode a bike. Can we start with something simple and ease our way into doing more difficult things? Didn't you say something weird? Sea turtles climb trees, jellyfish are walking. Oh yeah, I remember that, a card where he says that. With your previous experience, riding a bike won't be difficult. You have to believe in yourself. We ride our bikes onto the picturesque old bridge, admiring the ancient buildings on both sides of the street. Stepping on the pedals, Raphael is out of breath. It takes a while for him to catch up. Looks like you're holding up well, huh? I still think that having your feet on the ground is safer. Just saying. Or we should at least ride a tandem bike together. <laughs> so that's why he wanted to ride a tandem, so that we can do all the work. Upon arriving at our destination, we park the bikes beside a street cafe and slowly start walking around the square. When you said you lived here before, what kind of life was it? Take this path we're walking, for example. I've walked down it for three years. Isn't it lonely to live in a foreign country all by yourself? There was someone else with me at the time. An old butler. Oh, is that who the, that old guy is, maybe? Where is he now? Did he part ways with you? Yeah. You never talked about these things. I start to feel a little anxious, but I don't know why. Sulking, I turn around and kick a pebble. It's not just that. You never really mentioned anything about your past, right? Follow me. Following Raphael as he makes another turn, the street widens. An archway with statues on both sides appears at the end. Many young people carrying their painting supplies set up easels on the spot. They're focused on painting the street scenery. The life I spoke of is a lot like theirs. It's not as special as you imagine it to be. It was always finishing my coursework on time, visiting my favorite art exhibitions when I was free, and going to a random theater every night. Are you saying you went to school here? He nods as he lifts his head. I see the building worn down by time itself in front of us. I'm guessing this is like somewhere in Italy. That's what like my mind is going anyway. I start to think and like every time they're like, oh, this square or the theater, I'm like trying to think of a particular place in Italy that might have all these things. <laughs> I start to think Raphael has been honest about his experiences traveling and studying around the world. Especially in a place that's widely renowned for its art. It shouldn't be surprising. Stop looking at me like that. You know, I learned a lot in your human world. As a matter of fact, I was the youngest student for that academic year. 
During our conversation, a few students wearing flower crowns pass by, laughing and chatting as they enter a humble looking building. Why are they wearing flower crowns? Only students who are about to graduate wear those. That's a cute tradition. Did you wear one? It's a distant memory from a very long time ago. Are any of your teachers or friends here? Maybe we can visit them. Surprisingly, Raphael shakes his head. We can't. Have you not talked to them in a long time? I'm not really into making friends at every stage of my life. Like back then, I preferred to be alone and indulge in my own thoughts. He casually talks about his past, past as he leads me through the hallway lined with statues. We end up in a small garden hidden under the shade of trees. Here, summer is long, hot, but not stifling. The air is tinged with the scent of ripe fruit. I'd be willing to spend a whole afternoon in this place just to remember the name of a flower or a bird. Okay, so those must have been happy days. Are you happy? I'm good with that. Are you happy? Mm. Do I look unhappy to you? There's nostalgia in your words, but it's different from when you're actually happy. Oh, it's night time now. After leaving the art academy, we continue our bike ride and go along our planned route. The road dips into a downward slope. The dry yet slightly cool summer night breeze caresses us. My thoughts drift, imagining those pasts he mentioned. What I'm trying to picture in my mind is like a fishtail slipping through my fingers. Illusions that blur the line between reality and fantasy are left behind. Where did Raphael go? Why hasn't he caught up yet? Oh, he's lagging behind, is he? Becoming somewhat bored of waiting, I pull over to the side of the road, lean against the guard rail, and take out the book I bought in my bag. Bought from my bag. As we spent time together, I slowly realised something. Although Lemurians and humans look similar, the habits are vastly different. They adapted to the water pressure of the deep sea, they're used to the temperatures down there, and they don't like hot places in particular. Of course, in the eyes of a human, they're very picky about what they eat, wear, and use. Uh. <laughs> I see a panicked figure who's on a bicycle that's moving really fast. Raphael! But before I could say anything, there was a cacophony of clinks and clangs. The bike couldn't be stopped in time and he tumbled into the bushes the moment we locked eyes. <laughs> Rushing off the grass, clinging to his clothes, he rubs his ankle and slowly gets up. Dazed, he looks around. For some reason, he looks somewhat lonely. He seems unhappy all of a sudden. Ooh. Seeing me approach, Raphael abruptly sits down on the ground, pretending to have taken a painful fall. <laughs> pretending, hey? I saw that. I saw... <laughs> I saw you stand up! Raphael says nothing, he leans back and stretches his leg out on the grass. I walk over and lie down next to him. My head rests on the warm, soft grass. Have you noticed how beautiful the sky looks from here? It's night time. The bright, old city on the opposite bank is reflected in the murky river. Raphael and I lie on the grass next to the square, gazing at the night sky that's slowly lit up by the stars, and below that night sky is a tranquil cityscape. Let me guess, lying down on the grass and enjoying the scenery was also one of your special pastimes. Yeah, the first time I sat here, watching people come and go, I was jealous of them. Is it because they were happier than you back then? The sights and sounds, and the food too, are worth taking the time to appreciate. But those people didn't even spare a second glance. The apple blossoms, lemongrass, butterflies fluttering over hilltops, and lemon yellow robin beaks. There are countless ceiling frescoes and works of art everywhere, and the small theaters have performed plays for hundreds of years. 
Yet because people have grown used to them always being there, they're taken for granted. And then? Eventually, I made myself forget about that unhappiness you mentioned. I embraced your human lifestyle. Raphael, you're such an idiot. Then what does that make you? I'm trying to say that maybe it's better if you don't trust me too much. After all, one of the survivors of your kind who was deceived by humans dissipated into sea foam. I'm not that naive. These experiences and feelings, maybe I made them up to deceive you. Look into my eyes. Why? He absentmindedly rests his head on his arm and turns toward me. You're a merman. Did it hurt when you first learned how to walk on land? Do you feel lonely in this world that is totally different from yours? Oh. <laughs> Why aren't you saying anything? You've been poisoned by a witch and she took away your voice? Stifling a laugh, I'm about to poke his cheek when thunder suddenly roars. Oh, here we go, it's all rainy. Raindrops fall from dark clouds that have blanketed the sky. It's actually raining. It's raining. Let's head inside. <laughs> I don't know why I find that funny. It doesn't usually rain cats and dogs around this time. Eh, it's getting worse. <laughs> I don't know, it's just the voice acting with that one made me laugh. Tourists tried their best to shield themselves from the rain and rush into the shops lining the streets. Before I could react, Raphael pulls me into his arms. His breath reaches me. The jacket over our heads tried, tries to fend off the rain, but it's useless. Staring at the flickering lights in the rainy night, I suddenly have the urge to take his hand and run away. Again, I guess, oh, they're so soaked, they need to have a shower now, and then things happen. <laughs> Hurrying back to our hotel, the pouring rain outside seemingly isolates us from the rest of the world. It's so cold. Oh, that looks like a nice bath. I, oh, that looks nice, with nice scenery as well. Oh, I'm so jealous, I love that. Anyway. <laughs> Raphael leads me into the bathroom. He draws a bath and the warm water releases comforting steam. Is it hard to think of an answer to my question? I'm wondering if writing something like how to care for a Lemurian would be easier, or would it be quicker to tell you a thousand and one Lemurian stories? Don't you know the consequences of the second option? If the ruler hears the same story again, the storyteller will be... Afraid he wouldn't tell me anything. I pretend to be serious and make a cutthroat gesture. Gesture. Guess who's the one that falls into a trap without realizing it? He places his slender fingers on my shoulder and touches a damp jacket. You can be my caretaker, and I can tell you a thousand and one stories. I'm okay with every choice you provide. When his hand touches the strap inside the coat, he freezes, coughs, and then quickly pulls back his hand. But you should take a hot bath first, or else you'll catch a cold. Seeing him about to walk away, I somehow managed to muster up my courage. <laughs> Nova! <laughs> I love that. Oh, I have so much sweet things saved on my Insta, I don't know if I want to make it or just buy it somewhere. Oh, oh, that's dangerous. Instagram is dangerous with all the good food, but yeah. You can't leave. You still haven't answered my question. Oh, what are we doing? Raphael's body stiffens. Before his hand can free itself from my grip, he stumbles and falls backward into the bathtub. <laughs> Let's see where this goes. Oh, this is so classic. I can't. A quietness settles into the bathroom. The only sound that can be heard is the heavy rain outside. Do you want me to stay? Oh, there's even, like, serious music now. He's disheveled, damp strands of hair clinging to his neck. Meanwhile, his soaked jacket is behind him, floating on the surface of the water. <laughs> his ears are so red. <laughs> 
Nicely observed, Nova. Soaked, he looks at me, the emotions in his eyes inscrutable. You can spare me the details, but there's something important you should tell me. How do you, you Lemurians express your love? Oh, what does she mean by that? Do you really want to know? Oh, here we go, here we go, here we go. In the dimly lit steam-filled space, he abruptly grabs my wrist. Raphael, you... Oh god, here we go. Oh, here we go. Here... <laughs> I can't. <laughs> At least I don't need to say this with anything here. Lemurians fall in love with someone. All our senses are committed to perceive them without question. Oh, well, we have to hold it. Of course we do. Your way of triggering my senses has only touched the surface. Yes, Raph, we really want to know. <laughs> no, but you're killing me. Oh, God. Oh, my God. I can't. How am I streaming this? Oh my god. Oh, it's the, it's the noises. <laughs> I thought the other one was bad. Oh my god. Oh my god. <laughs> Someone's intentions are as clear as day. Okay, where, where is. No, my fan is downstairs. I can't with this. Oh, I can't use that. That's got my address on it. Oh, what about this? Okay. <laughs> okay, right. Um, I'm gonna go with that one. Only because you're the one doing it. <laughs> Raph, you better stop exactly fancy what's going on. I thought the last one was bad. What is he doing? But I can't stop watching. I'm so glad I don't need to say these lines. <laughs> oh my god. The things are happening. And you're warm. I like that. Wow, it really, it really goes far, doesn't it? Will you still like me, no matter who I become? Oh, that's kind of cute, though, the way he said that. You. Oh, oh here we go. The noises as well, that doesn't help. Cool, I'm gonna compliment girls, say the horrible <laughs> I love that. Lord, they need to be six feet apart. <laughs> no, no during COVID. Oh my god. If you say so, join me then. Let's drown in the ocean together. That's, that's kind of like a, a nice kind of line in a romance book, isn't it? A bit, bit corny, but with the music and everything. Oh, I'm glad that's over because <laughs> that was so... It got so further than I thought it would. And sorry for the noises, but I can't help it. Oh wow, and to think I've got Xavier's one I've got to play as well after this. Not today, but on another day. I've heard that one's even worse than this. <laughs> okay, right. Whew. In the depths of the night, the rain eases up. After they did it, obviously, because we, we, we could see what was happening there. Um, the bedside lamp casts a warm glow. 
I lean against the headboard attempting to finish the book about Lemurians before the rain stops. So, what's in that book? He looks so much like better in the 3D moving what's going on situation than his actual sprite in my opinion. Like his sprite, he looks at, I don't know, he doesn't look as muscular, maybe. I think that's what it is. It's a fantasy story inspired by Lemuria. On a stormy night, a traveler meets a Lemurian. Enchanted by his singing voice, traveler follows him to the seabed. The plot itself isn't really creative. What draws the reader in are those questionable rumors about Lemuria. Like... There's this miraculous conch of wonders at the bottom of the sea that can store sound, and they even hold a unique underwater ceremony. Raphael starts laughing as he listens, his shoulders shaking. What? <laughs> it's nothing. I'm wondering. If I actually told you stories about Lemuria, a thousand and one nights wouldn't be enough for that. Raphael, if in a stormy night you, could, you do encounter Lemurian in the ocean, could his singing voice truly enchant you and drag you down to the seabed? The book on my lap, lap is suddenly pulled away, seizing this chance. He leans in and takes my hand. There's mirth in his eyes. Do you want me to tell you? Then tonight, allow me to share with you the first story. I thought he was going to say, then tonight, allow me to sing. <laughs> I want to close my eyes, but he lowers his neck and kisses the palm of my hand. His moist lips then brush against my fingers, soft like a whispered promise. Our story begins with the very first sea god, long, long ago. I slept well that night. In my dream, I was a traveller in a story. I heard an ethereal song on a stormy night. I le leaned out from the boat and gazed into the dark waters below. If on a stormy night I encounter a Lemurian, before I even hear his song, I'll grab his wet, lonely hand. I'll embrace him, immerse myself in his warmth, and ignore all other melodies in this world. I'm sure she did sleep. The next day, as we're getting ready to leave, Raphael and I pass the antique shop again. Weird, I just bought a book here yesterday. Now it's just a building with no one and nothing inside. Through the glass door, an empty display case casts a shadow as deep as a dark forest. Everything's packed up. We should get going. Everyone always seems so relaxed here. What do they even do? Maybe they don't do anything. They're just waiting for summer to end. The puddles on the street reflect our faces along with the world behind us, seemingly unchanged by the coming and going of centuries. Yet it's as if everything will evaporate under the scorching summer heat. Speaking of which, I could have sworn I saw you walk into the shop that day. Was I seeing things? Raphael turns and heads into the shade of the lush summer trees, pushing his bicycle along. You were imagining things. Oh dear me, okay. Well that was intense. Every time I'm like, oh it'll be fine, it'll be fine, and then it surprises me. <laughs> it's fun though. I don't know, there's something amusing about squealing about what's going on. <laughs> but anyway thank you for those who've come for this portion of my stream and hopefully i'll see you again in another one of my love and deep space uh videos <laughs>